So two years ago, I finished my bootcamp with no real idea how the cloud worked. And two months ago, I just completed the AWS Cloud Developer Associate certification. Let's talk about a little bit about how I did that, whether or not I think it's worth it for you, and talk a little bit about what that certification can do for your career. So starting off, AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, which is the largest web plat hosting platform out there. They accommodate for about 33% of the total market share for web hosting platforms, which gives you an idea of about what total of the web traffic they're dealing with of the entire internet in a day. In order to handle that, they built out a fairly elaborate system of services and subservices and interlocking mechanisms by which they can connect to each other that is their cloud architecture system, which they call AWS. And within that AWS process, there are certifications that essentially are certifying you for different levels of knowledge within different frameworks. So there's an architect path and a developer path. The associate levels are the entry level technical certifications within AWS. So why have certifications in a system like AWS? Well, there's 117 different services operating under the hood in AWS that you can choose between to do different things. And a lot of them have a lot of overlapping functionality. So if you wanna be best utilizing the cloud and lowering your costs as much as possible by using the economy of scale, you wanna understand what those different services do so you understand which one can do the workload you have best versus all the others. And so being an AWS developer means knowing how to stand up all those different services, knowing how to configure them correctly to minimize your costs and make sure that everything's gonna run the most efficiently and make sure everything's gonna scale correctly too when you're deploying like EC2 instances, which are just generalized cloud server instances. That allows you to have that greater level of knowledge and come into a conversation where you can really help kind of create an application in the most efficient, most effective, and also most easy to manage way leveraging all the different cloud services because they give you a ton of utility if you take the time to utilize it, but you do kind of have to build into the system and understand how it works to be able to fully utilize what all everything AWS has to offer. So to talk about the AWS Developer Associate Certification, there is no real work requirement within all of it. It is all tied to one certification exam. However, that exam is very hard. So talking about a little bit what that experience is like, you know, the developer certification is about the actual technical focus the standing up of EC2 instances, the configuration of DynamoDB, the mechanics of actually working in the AWS console, setting things up, connecting different applications, and also debugging different things and figuring out where costs can be optimized to a certain level with how you're deploying and within your deployment strategy. So it is the entry level on that developer technical, technical path. So you are mostly focused on the larger AWS services. So things like DynamoDB, EC2, S3, Lambda Express, like those kinds of things that are the larger, more forward-facing, future-facing systems within AWS. It's teaching you how to configure those systems, work within those, with obviously a little bit of discussion of all the rest. So you need to know the ins and outs of how to configure all those things, how to understand what your request throughput rates are going to be based on the size and volume of your requests versus the maximum request size inside different AWS services. Very complex stuff like that. So. The thing that is good about this though is the exam is multiple choice and it is just the one exam. So as you're going through the prep process, essentially what you can be doing is learning these things, getting the hands-on experience, going through labs and stuff to understand it, but then also using flashcards to study, which is what I did. For me, why I chose the developer certification was in my job, I was prompted to either get certified in one of the two associate certifications. So I chose the developer track because inside my firm, I see a lot less hands-on experience with AWS. And so I wanted to have that really technical, how to actually build it out as we transition into the cloud. As I was going through the development process, essentially what I did is I worked with Cloud Academy. So Cloud Academy was a firm provided resource. It's a streaming platform that offers lessons and labs in AWS, different things, as well as other cloud services too. My experience with it is just on the AWS course side, but I went through their AWS Developer Associate course. I went through about a third of the lectures, which was really handy and helpful. I think it, it helped me kind of get primed for how to be thinking about those services. Um, but I had also already been through a lot of the cloud practitioner material, so I was really familiar with what a lot of the services did on a conceptual basis. It was going away from that conceptual basis into the actual implementation that I had more questions. So what I ended up doing was watching some of the lectures, a lot of them kind of sped up in the background as I was going through all the labs on the Cloud Academy course. So going through all the labs helped a lot because I got that technical experience. I got that technical focus on how to actually stand things up where I wouldn't necessarily have had that same experience 
had I not had those labs. And getting to the test, a lot of the trickier questions are about the actual mechanics of working within the console. And so that was a really helpful thing to have. Beyond that, I'm a big believer in flashcards. So I, I'm gonna add a link in the description of this video to the Quizlet flashcard deck that I use, but it's a deck of about 650 different AWS exam questions off of different practice exams. And so I just went through 20 to 30 of those every morning for about a month. And by the end of that, I was ready for the exam. So to speak to the exam itself, you have 130 minutes to complete it. It's 65 questions, so two minutes a question on average and it costs $150 to take it. The exam, I took it online proctored. It was really actually quite a bit more challenging than I expected it to be. I would call it hard technical college final level of difficulty, but in a multiple choice format. So it was a lot of questions that are choose the best answer or the most optimized solution. So the multiple choices give you as much as it usually does on most tests. I really would encourage people to study a lot for this one. I studied a ton. So like I said, I studied those flashcards for about a month on top of additional coursework and labs and things like that. I got one question right over the threshold I needed to get certified. That gives you an idea, it's a hard test. I generally do pretty well on standardized tests, multiple choice style tests too, so I'm not like an anxious test taker. So you definitely wanna prepare for this exam. It's tough, I don't wanna scare anybody off of it. It's definitely achievable. You just need to make sure you go into it with a good level of preparation. Otherwise, it's gonna be much harder than you're expected to. So I don't want anyone to be surprised by that or caught off guard when they get into the testing room. Make sure you prepare, study a lot, but you can do it. So now to the big question, would I do it again? And the answer is yes. When I learned to code going through my bootcamp tech elevator, I had to put a lot of active energy into that. Like it was a very active process, four hours a day of lecture, lots of work. But now I have the baseline knowledge of code. I didn't really have to learn any new code fundamentals to get certified for AWS. It was mostly just going through the process of actually learning the AWS systems, which is mostly memorization. So for me, it was kind of a passive absorption process. Like I said, going through a handful of flashcards in the morning makes it pretty easy to start to work through a lot of those material and get really familiar with the questions. And then going through the labs got me really well prepped. And I feel like that was actually really practical stuff for my career, it's stuff I actually use in my job where I'm deploying different things and setting up different instances and trying to pioneer how different things are gonna look inside my company. It's a very helpful thing to have when you're looking at that technical experience from those labs when I'm going into a new environment or trying to set up a new service. Now, I haven't been through a job hunt with it, but I have looked at a lot of the numbers, and I know that the average salary for a cloud engineer, especially a AWS certified cloud engineer, is quite a bit higher than your average software engineer. I would say, depending on your cost of living area, you could be looking at between ten dollars to $30,000 more a year based on the different statistical numbers I've gotten out there. Now, that's a generalized average of me. I've done no real statistical analysis on that, but there has been a lot of those numbers thrown around. I've seen numbers thrown around that software, that across the board, certified cloud engineers make $30,000 more than their counterparts. I do not think those numbers are actually accurate but I do think there is a pretty substantial increase in the amount of recruiters and hype there is gonna be about you and your qualifications if you can bring one of these cloud certifications to the table. So overall, relatively low expenditure and not too much active time investment, but a lot of, you know, to be fair, a lot of in the background passive learning. I think it was worth it and I think I would do it again if I, if I had to. I'm excited to see if it opens any new doors for me going forward, but honestly, the experience itself and getting a lot more familiar with cloud architecture feels really good going forward in my career because I do think that's where software space is headed. And so that's just another thing to shout out for it is it's good to understand the cloud. Just from a career standpoint, I think it's a really good thing to be a cloud expert because that's where the industry is going. I think that's where more computing in general is gonna end up going. And so understanding how that architecture is working and how those handshakes are going, I think is really gonna be a helpful thing for almost any software engineer or software developer, either new, aspiring, or experienced. So I hope this helped anybody that was looking at AWS certifications. If you're interested in my transition to software engineering and my bootcamp experience, check out this video right here. Otherwise, I will see you folks soon.